Hello there everybody, how's it going? This is MAW0001 again. Has it already been a week? Doesn't time fly past? Um, you've probably noticed I've got a, a little friend here to me to start off with. It's a Dalek. He's called Derek the Dalek. Um, he doesn't, you know, he's not really seen that much. He's actually a Dalek beautician. Yes. He, um, instead of saying, going around saying exterminate, he says exfoliate. Yes. Yes. So, <laughs> there you go. Start off with a bad joke. And, uh, continuing with the bad jokes, we have the review. Sorry, Derek. Just move out of the way there. Thank you. Review of the new DC-52, the 13th this week. I'll be very quick about this. There's not much going on this week, I don't think. Um, start with the worst. Legion lost. Uh, it's just confusing. Uh, if it's supposed to bring new readers in, it's going to confuse the heck out of them. Confuse the heck out of me, and I've read Legion and that already. Um, next one up, Superboy. Just a boring story, really, I thought. There wasn't much... You know, there wasn't anything to grab my attention. Again, if I was a new reader, I don't think I'd be going after issue two. Next up, Deathstroke, number one. The only saving grace for this is the Simon Beasley cover. And that's about all I can say. That's the nicest thing I can say about it, really. Then we have Grifter, number one. Again, a boring comic. Not much happening. And... Batman and Robin, number one. Nothing to write home about, really. Then we have this one, which is Suicide Squad, number one. And what have they done with Harley Quinn? It's ridiculous. I mean, it's just... It, it, just the new costume is rubbish. And can you really see cosplayers going to comic conventions dressed up as the new Harley Quinn? Can you really see people like Tallis Silver or Kit dressing up as the new Harley Quinn? It, it's just not that good. And it... it yeah, really. Next up, Green Lantern. It's a continuation of, War of uh, Aftermath War of Green Lanterns. Number two. Just a Green Lantern story, really. They might as well have just put it as issue number 65, or whatever the last Green Lantern issue was from the umpteenth series. <laughs> Next up, we have Frankenstein, Agent of Shade. Interesting comic, interesting read. Some good ideas in it. The artwork wasn't the best. And... Usually if it's a really good story, I can ignore the artwork. But this one, the story was okay, but the artwork distracted me from it. I think if they had another artist on it, it probably would have been a lot better. And, you know, it's alright. I probably will at least have a look at number two. But, you know, they could have got a better artist on it. Next we have Mr. Terrific, which I think that could possibly be... Um, possibly be looked into by the Trade Descriptions Act people. It wasn't terrific. It was okay. But I suppose if, if you have a character of Mr. OK, you know, you know, you can't really sort of like, wouldn't really have a ring to it, you know. Who are you? I'm Mr. OK. Oh, okay. Uh, the artwork in it was nice. And the story was alright. Didn't really grab me. I may look at number two, but looking at the next four comics we have left, I probably won't be picking up number two of Mr. Terrific. Uh, although I will probably be picking up number two of this, which is Demon Knight. Pretty good story. Shows you the origin of Jason Blood and Etrigan the Demon being fused together by Merlin. And it also has Madame Xanadu. Do you know what? It sort of reminded me a bit of the Legend of the Seeker TV series. 
and books, or well, basically any sort of medieval fantasy story book sort of thing. But it was a it was a pretty good read. The artwork's beautiful in it, really nice. And yeah, I think I'll be picking up number two of that. Also, possibly on my pickup list for next month is Resurrection Man number two. This is Resurrection Man number one. It is exactly the same creative team as the original Resurrection Man series, which went from 1987 to 1999, I think. I think there were about 27 issues, I think. The artwork in it is exactly the same. If you liked the original Resurrection Man series, you'd more than likely enjoy this as well. It was a pretty good read. Quite action-packed for a first issue. Definitely get number two for that one. And next up, Red Lanterns. Number one. Pretty good. Very interesting. Best thing about it, full first splash page with Dexter, the Red Lantern cat. Can't go wrong with that. And the story was pretty interesting. Artwork, wonderful. After wonderful artwork. And talking of wonderful artwork, this is the best of this week. Batwoman number one. You can see there. Batwoman number one. It recaps the origin of Batwoman, but without going too much into, you know, doesn't get too bogged down and convoluted into the actual origins of Batwoman. The artwork is fantastic. I can't floor it, floor it at all. Um, it is a brilliant story, brilliant read, and that is number one for this week. I think you should definitely pick up Batwoman number one. Now then, I've got a few more pickups, very quickly. Uh, 2000 AD, I'm sure everybody's heard of this. This is the British Weekly Anthology comic. And I'll just show you, show you these quickly. Number 1749. I'm not quite sure if this will all come on the on the camera. I'll give it a go. It's a wrap cover for 1750. Yeah, pretty good painted cover. And it's just about four. No, nope, stay in there. Yes, I do. And this one, which I think is a gorgeous painted cover by Simon Davies for 1751. 2000 AD, as you probably know, has had some brilliant creators and artists come from it and go on to bigger and better things. Garfinas, Grant Morrison, Mark Miller, Simon Beasley. And it's just one of the few comics that actually stays at a good quality. And I'll just take these down. Next we have the classic Marvel figurine collection. This is a fortnightly magazine that has a figurine. Oh, sorry, fort, fortnightly magazine. I did say it right, didn't I? Yeah, fortnightly magazine that has a figurine with it, cast in lead, hand painted. So they say, pretty good quality. This is issue one five eight. We just got Spiral in it from the X-Men comics. I'm not quite sure where, if you haven't been getting them, I'm not quite sure where you'd be getting the older issues of this because they are quite scarce from what I understand. Sorry about that noise, I'll be putting it back in the box. And uh, next issue, which is in a fortnight's time, is Siren from X Factor. So yeah, pretty good. Some cheapies now. I've got these from Charity Shop. Batman Begins Jigsaw Book. I'm not quite sure how much it was actually originally. It's got a cover price of $12.99. I'm not quite sure how much that would be in, in pounds. But I picked it up for 95p in a charity shop. I've still got the stickers with it untouched and still got all the jigsaws in there as well 
untouched. Excuse this, I'm not very stretching over. <laughs> so, not bad for ninety not bad for less than a pound, is it? So and take that down. This is a British annual. Uh, as I'm sure quite a few of you know, in in the UK, one of the biggest things that kids used to get about 20 years ago or so was an annual. Of your parents or your grandparents used to pick them up for you, and it used to be your your Christmas present. And I always used to love opening up. You knew you, knew, you basically knew what it was because it was a book shaped thing. And I always used to love opening up the past, opening up my Christmas presents and finding inside a copy of 2000 AD Annual or Judge Dread Annual or you know whatever I was, whatever comic I was reading weekly at that time. And this is Warlord from 1985, which means that it would have been printed, it would have been released and printed in 1984. It's not the best quality, but you know, still good, still readable, still enjoyable. And one day I may actually do a video on the annuals that I've got. Not all of them, because I've got way too many of them. But, yeah. Very quickly, two DVD pickups I had. Punisher Warzone. I know it's old, but I hadn't had it. And it was only a pound, so that's not too bad. And The Monster's Revenge. Brilliant. 1981. Most of the original cast. And absolutely fantastic to watch. Now finally, if I just take these down, remember last week I showed you the Fantastic Four full colour and album. And I said to you, what did you think could be so weird about that? There we go. Now, as you can see, it's been drawn on. It's an old book, I think it's from the 1960s, but that's not what's peculiar about it. If I just open this up, I'd like to introduce you to my purple thing. There you go, my purple thing. And it's not just a front page problem, no, sorry, the, flash, the splash page problem, he's purple all the way through it. Reed Richards is now blonde. If I can find a picture of the human torch flaming on, in a minute, I will show you that. That's the worst I'm looking for. That I should just dig up. Lovely cover. The human torch is a bit blue. And finally, leave this back one. Finally, we have the good Doctor Doom in his most garish outfit yet. Red cape, blue armour, and yellow tunic. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. The only thing I can think of is, is this was, it was easy, it was cheaper for them to buy the black and white and then have somebody who had never seen the Fantastic Four car it in. <laughs> like I, said, I saw this at the boot sale. It was 50 pence. I wasn't going to get it until I picked it up and looked inside and I thought, no, I have to have that for one thing and one thing only. So I can say to somebody and say, do you want to see my purple thing? And on that note, and if I can keep it there, on that note, I shall leave you with the vision of my purple thing and say thank you for watching if you liked it comment like subscribe down the bottom there or at the top and if you know people who might be interested get them to subscribe because I only know that you like this if you like or subscribe <laughs> thank you for everybody who has subscribed and who have commented and I hope to see you next week Thank you for watching. Goodbye.